Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Kansas City Jazz drummer Natalie Bates. I caught her live last week at the record bar with the Grand Marquis, and it was a powerful set of much-needed live music. We caught up with her to talk about current projects, COVID life, her history, and so much more. She is originally from Idaho and moved to Kansas City at a young age, where she began studying under the direction of the much-sought-after jazz Latin artist, percussionist, and drummer Doug Otwater. She has a great history, like being in the five-star our jazz band under the direction of the great Bob Drummond. She has a great story. Enjoy. Thanks for taking a minute out for the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So that Grand Marquis show was quite uh, quite an event the other night. Was that one of the first live shows you've done in a while? Yeah, actually. For the new year, it has, for sure. What other gigs, what other things are going on for you right now? I've got a couple jobs. I work at a, a brewery uh, downtown and have a small um, custom trailing business with my mom and then play music on the side and doing some uh, grass design also. So I, cool. I, I don't like doing anything for too long, you know. <laughs> so do you have any recordings out? Do you have anything that you're working on? Uh, not personally. Um, it's definitely a goal for this year is um, to start writing music again and, you know, start working with, you know, other musicians. It just It's good to play with other people and, you know, get your brain working on new music. You were, you're originally from Idaho, and you moved to Kansas City when you were very young. So talk to me a little bit about kind of your journey into getting into music. I started uh, drum lessons in second grade, just asked my parents if I could take drum lessons, and they were all about it. So found me a teacher, Doug Allwater, really just ended up studying with him all the way until I graduated high school, and then met with him again when I ended up going to the conservatory and uh, Kansas City, and it was, it was great. Um, just, you know, started in, uh, like, club bands in high school, uh, got into marching band, loved marching band, and then jazz band, and played in a uh, local big band for high school kids and middle school kids, and then that's how I got into jazz, was uh, playing in a big band. That was the five-star jazz band, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Cool. What was that experience like? Was it, that was uh, that was under the direction of Bob Drummond, correct? Yes, I, that was definitely uh, the experience I needed, just to to play with that many people and to play so often, and to really kind of play music where the drums are are leading the band. Kind of made me find my purpose as a as a drummer and made me really listen to the people I was playing with. You know, you got to listen to each other. You can't just be in your own world. That was one of the most fun experiences um, in my music career. So early on, as you were getting into jazz drumming and music, who were some heavy influences on you from the world of jazz? Probably my top two would be Joe Jones and Ella Fitzgerald. I say Ella because I, I just think she was so effortless in what she did. And really, both of them really had no rules. And that, you know, growing up, studying out of a book and not really understanding that you can kind of, that you can break the rules, you know, that like you think, oh, swing is this pattern, Latin is this pattern, you know, those are the kind of basic things you learn in school or in lessons, and then when you start soloing, uh, those two people were really uh, influential in my playing. So what was the first live, real deal live jazz show that you saw that really blew you away? Oh, honestly, I, all I can think of is uh, live YouTube videos I was looking up. But when I when I saw Ella playing with uh, Duke Ellington's big band, that knocked my socks off. Couldn't be there in person, obviously, but, um, you know, YouTube was great for that, just being able to see those guys play. And honestly, uh, sitting at the Green Lady uh, was, was great because you can sit right behind the drummer and, you know, really get up close and personal with the people playing. So that... I don't think I have a particular concert in mind, but just being able to see local guys play and, you know, learn from them was great. So being a part of the Kansas City scene, you've been here for quite a while. What's the greatest part of being involved and being a part of this community? Sometimes we take advantage of it, but there's just so many musicians in the city that are able to play so many different types of music, but most of them know how to play jazz, and they're, it's a great community, a great supportive community, I feel like, where everyone is able to kind of find their niche and kind of just explore new music 
abilities with other people. And I think that's just great. You know, I, I'm not interested in leaving the city anytime soon because of that. So being a part of this scene, that's, that's the other thing that I noticed. It seems as though Kansas City is more of a destination than a springboard anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jackie Myers is a great example of that. She moved here from Austin, Texas to make a living playing jazz, and she's doing just that. You know, plenty of venues, plenty of people who want to come and see you play. Yeah, just a really supportive city of the arts in general. What do you like the best about being a professional musician? I mean, the the band I'm in right now, the Grand Marquis, I, I love touring. That's definitely, you know, the most fun. Go on the road, and you all get to listen to what everyone else is listening to, and see new bands, see new places. That's definitely a big perk of, you know, it's kind of like what you look forward to growing up playing, you know, is getting out there and playing for new people in new places. So what do you like the best about Kansas City? I really, I love the different neighborhood. I call them pockets. Kind of how, you know, it's not just like you land in Kansas City and that's Kansas City. It's that there are all these different neighborhoods and even people that come visit, you know, tourists, they they have no idea that there's so many different characters and different uh, di- little different cultures everywhere. And I think that keeps Kansas City really dynamic, and it keeps it from really changing too much. You know, it's not it's not all changing together. It's all changing at different times. Everyone's doing new different things, and it's it's still fun for me to explore the city. You find new you can find new things every day to do, and new bands to listen to all the time. So, you know, Kansas City obviously has a very rich history of jazz, and it's really strong. Do you think about that? Do you think about that lineage and being a part of that? Uh, Sometimes. Actually, I think a lot about what or who will be remembered in, you know, 40 years. I I think that's always interesting, you know. Like, when when you're studying um, jazz history in class, you find out that there were, you know, five other musicians playing the same type of music that, you know, they never met. No one knew that those other people were playing around. And so, you know, one of them got popular and the others didn't. And I always just wonder, you know, who's going to be remembered by the kids studying jazz, you know, in a couple decades. You know, you've dedicated your your life to it in very simply, but why do you love jazz? Freedom of expression. You know, you can be creative and really open up and I don't know. It's just a really, it's a really special thing to learn as a musician. I feel like it just really opens you up uh, musically, and yeah, you just I, for me, I feel really free playing jazz. And I think the hard thing is a lot of people have trouble with that. I mean, I definitely struggled with that when I was first playing because you you almost have so many options, and it's hard to just. Remember to just play what sounds good, but, um, yeah, it just really opens you up as a musician. Along those same lines about, about the history of Kansas City, if you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see anybody in the history of Kansas City, maybe on 18 and Pine, who would you go see and why? Uh, well, I, I feel like I would just want to be here on a weekend during Prohibition and go to the Blue Room and see who shows up. <laughs> It kind of sounded like, you know, at any at any time, anyone could show up and they just have a big old jam. And, that's, you know, everyone loves a good jam. So that's definitely what I would want to be a part of. Right on. You know, you, you had the chance to see, you know, kind of the revival of jazz the other night with people being out and playing live. But more than that, you know, since we've been away from it largely since March of 2020, what do you hope we all realize about the power of live music when we get back to it more in earnest? It's an experience, and I think it affects people physically and emotionally, and I think uh, it's it's really underrated. And when, you know, we had the lockdown, I, you know, I'm sure everyone was on Spotify or Apple Music or something or, you know, watching YouTube videos of bands. It just, there's something about it where every everyone has their music that they listen to to make them feel a certain way. And seeing it live... And watching someone perform, it's just, uh, you can't beat it, you know? So everything's going to come down to this. Everyone has a perception or an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, your fans. But ultimately, you live your life. Who do you think you are? Oh, that's a, that's a big question. Um, yes. I, 
I don't know. I just, I consider myself just a, a creative person who wants to try new things all the time. Uh, you grow as a person when you try new things and you have to go through some type of hardship, whether it's learning some new music or being in a situation with new people that make you feel uncomfortable, whatever it is. I just, I feel like I'm just kind of chasing experiences and, you know, try to understand other people and that also helps you be a better musician. Right on. Natalie, thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Idaho, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Natalie for her time, energy, and cool. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Oh, we appreciate y'all so much. Thank you. Neon Jazz.